First appearing on the Atari 2600 in 1982, Carol Shaw's River Raid, published by Activision, was an early million seller in the then fledgling world of video games. Tasking players with flying a state-of-the-art jet fighter up the aptly named River of No Return to destroy its many bridges, River Raid is a challenging vertically scrolling shoot 'em up with an astonishing amount of content for the time. Shaw got around the memory constraints of early gaming hardware by not directly storing the game's map data as part of the game files. Instead, River Raid was an early example of procedural generation at work. Unlike modern games that use procedural generation for randomised levels, however, Shaw used a hard-coded starting point to ensure the same map was created by the program every time. The entire River Raid ROM file for the 2600 is just a matter of kilobytes in size as a result. The 2600 version is probably the most well-known version of River Raid. It's certainly the most widely ported, having been re-released by publisher Activision in a number of retro compilations over the years, as well as forming part of Microsoft's Game Room service on the Xbox 360. May it rest in peace. But it's not the best version of River Raid. That honour arguably goes to the Atari 8-bit version, which adds considerably more detail to the graphics, including a more complex meandering river to challenge your piloting skills. This also added an extra dimension to skillfully manoeuvring up the river, in a vaguely similar fashion to how modern bullet hell shooters only have a small hitbox to register collisions. In River Raid for the Atari 8-bit, you can get away with flying over the riverbank, so long as you stay on the brown bits. In later stages where things get uncomfortably tight, this is essential to progress. The Atari 8-bit version also adds a wider variety of enemies to test your skills against, many of whom have learned to shoot back since their original incarnations. River Raid remains a noteworthy entry in shoot 'em up history for the fact it breaks so many of the genre conventions from its era. You can vary your speed, you can take different routes through many of the levels, you have meaningful choices to make. Today it's that rare example of a retro game that still plays just as well today as it did back in the early 80s. Mm-hmm. <laughs>